world champion 49ers on hand hosted by the Green Bay Packers hard by Lombardi Avenue. I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden and I think the question that nags everybody's mind especially the 49ers is can they do it again. Well you know they try not to think about going all the way they try and take every game uh, as a separate thing and that's what they're doing here with the Green Bay Packers and in talking to the 49ers yesterday they concerned because they remember the Packers beat them last year Joe Montana says we have to be patient we got Roger Craig back we're going to have to get a little running game going and we have to control Tim Harris. What about the Packers? They're three and four records, somewhat of a disappointment. Do they legitimately, you think, John, have a chance today? Yeah, I think they probably have a chance for a couple of reasons. One, if they don't have any turnovers, I think they can beat anyone in football. If they have turnovers, then I don't think they can beat anyone in football. And they remember one thing. They have confidence coming into this game because they're the last team to beat the 49ers. And I'll tell you, they're playing that one up big. And we're set to go with Chris Jackie set to kick it off for Green Bay. Deep for San Francisco is Dexter Carter at the goal line. Fumbles, recovers with a hole. Carter has to beat Jackie, and he couldn't quite do it. Almost. Scott Steven finally, but there's a flag down on the play. Yeah, there's a flag way back there at the 15-yard line. Going to be against the 49ers. And they're going to bring that back and start Receiving them team. inside Illegal the 20. Block from the back, That's why they drafted Dexter Center Carter at number one. First down. Howard Rowe, the referee. And that negates a big, long run back by Dexter Carter. There's the push from behind right there. That was also an area where Dexter Carter break through. 49ers out of the huddle. Roger Craig starting with Rathman, Joe Montana, the quarterback. Makes on first down, gets it out to Rathman. 49er first down. Montana to Rathman. Perhaps the greatest ever, Joe Montana, operates the 49er offense with Bubba Paris, Guy McIntyre, Sapolo, Barton Wallace, and Brent Jones at tight end. In the backfield, Craig is back with Rathman, Taylor, and Rice started wide receiver. Taylor dinged a little bit. Bad knee, bad back. First and ten. This is Roger Craig. Left side about three yards. The Packer defense up front, Brock, Nelson, and Brown. Two gappers. Stephen, Noble, Holland, and Harris, the linebackers. Harris, the dominant player on the Packer defense. Lee and Holmes, the cornerbacks. Chuck Cecil and Mark Murphy, the safety. Second and seven. Oh, and having that Chuck Cecil back there is like having another linebacker, too. Watch number 26. Montana, three-step drop outside over Thorne to Rice. Incomplete. Mark Lee was the Packer defender. Now, one thing they like to do, uh, the 49ers and Joe Montana and Jerry Rice, they like to get the ball into Jerry Rice's hands as early in the game as possible. And I think that's one thing with a lot of great receivers because if you don't get it to them quickly, sometimes they get a little frustrated. Third down, seven. Montana said to us yesterday, we go horizontal more than we go vertical, whatever that means. Well, they really don't go up the field a lot. Montana five-step drop this time, gets it out to Rathman. That'll not be enough for a first down, stopped by Burnell Dent. Seven-yard pickup. They'll have to punt the 49ers. And that's what the Packers talked about yesterday on defense. They said they did it a year ago. When they hit those short passes, they got to make short tackles and not let them make big runs out of it. Jeff Query back deep for the Packers. This guy runs like a 4-3-40, and if he breaks loose, he can uh, take it to distance in a very short time. 
Helton back to punt for the 49ers. Not a very good kick. Fielded by one of the short men. 24-yard punt. The Magic Man, the quarterback for Green Bay, Don Mikowski. Up front, Feingrad, Art, Campen, Euchre, and Mandarich with Ed West, the tight end. In the backfield, Woodside and Haddix, Harry Kemp and Sterling Sharp, the wide receivers. Sharp and Kemp split left. Woodside splits out to the right, leaving Haddix the lone running back. And he gets the carry. The 49er defense after a two-yard pickup. Here's Hope, Michael Carter, and Kevin Fagan when they go with three up front. Haley, Millen, and Walter in the middle. And Bill Romanowski on the outside. In the secondary, Pollard, Griffin, the leader, Ronnie Lott, and Chet Brooks. Second and eight for the Packers. Haddix got two. He again is the lone setback. Two tight ends this time for the Packers. West and Harris. Makowski has the pass to Harris. First down, Green Bay at the 49er, 32. Chet Brooks made the stop, 18-yard gain. This is the receiving tight end that the Packers have been looking for. He's only a rookie, but every week they put him more and more into the game plan. That's Jackie Harris, number 80. Rookie backup tight end, but they're always trying to find ways now to get him the ball. Look at this. In their three wins, they're plus seven in the turnover margin, and their four losses, they're minus 13. So that's really the Packers story. First to ten, that's the story almost every week, John. Turnovers. Well, so many secrets. Kemp goes in motion. This is Haddock. Side, hammers down inside the 30 to about the 27. Got five. The other thing that I'm impressed with is the Packer defense stopping them and then that getting that bad punt by the 49ers and getting good field position because as you think of the 49ers, you always remember their starts. They have great starts or great first drives. And when you can take that first drive away from them, and then get field position like that, that's a big, big plus for the Packers. Second and five. Woodside and Haddix behind Mikowski. Woodside. Goes to a first down. Romanowski made the stop. Could be a first. Yeah, the thing we were talking about, and even at practice yesterday, the Packers really do have confidence, and it comes from the fact that they remember that they beat them a year ago. They're starting to get a little running in their offense now, and Woodside is one of the guys who's doing it. That's a pretty good move right there to get out of that first tackle. First and 10, Green Bay at the 21-yard line of San Francisco. No score. The Packers in rain. Been motion again. That's the Haddix. Gain of four. I'll tell you one thing. The Packers are coming out here, and they're taking it right at the 49ers. Watch here. You're going to see Mandarich. He's number 77. Good drive blocker. The tight end there, 86, Ed West. One of the best blocking tight ends in the league. I'll tell you, they got some movement over there in that 49er defense. Hey, what you call, knocked them off the line. Job on Pierce Hope. Second and six, Green Bay. 49er 18. Haddock. To about the 14, another four-yard pickup stopped by Haley and Mellon. Yeah, Haddix has been a good pickup for these Green Bay Packers. They got him kind of as a blocker, and then when they got rid of Fullwood, remember a couple of weeks ago where he decided he didn't want to play in a Bears game, so they traded him the next day, and Haddix became a more a part of the running game, so he was a blocker. And, but he's a good, solid back. 
And don't forget, this is the number one team in the NFC against the rush. They're doing a number, a running number, against the number one ranked front line of the 49ers. Flag on the play. I tell you, it all started with the confidence they have in good field position. Well start. Offense, number 67, five-yard penalty. Repeat Billy R. Down. jumped a little early. Another good acquisition they made. Yeah, you know that plan B will do that. Uh, you know, the teams can only protect 37 players. And you can pick up some pretty good veteran players from other teams. Billy Yard, of course, on this uh, uh, Packer team is one of those guys. Third down. Three wide receivers set up. Actually four. Makowski underneath to Sterling Sharp. Close, but not a first down. Ronnie Lott made the hit. Anyone who comes in the middle needs to be aware of Ronnie Lott. Now the fans here at Lambeau Field, they want him to go for it. It's going to be a fourth and short. You're three and four. They're undefeated. You're at home. What do you do? Lindy and Fonte decided already to go for the field goal. Get those points on the board. Chris Jackie, it's about fourth and maybe a yard. He's 10 out of 12, and this will be from 30 yards. That was a big tackle by Ronnie Lott, saving that first down. Jackie's field goal is good. The Packers lead it 3 0. Early in this contest, 7 10 remaining first quarter. Nobody is putting quality on the road like Cadillac, winner of the 1990 Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award. In fact, Cadillac is the first and only car company to earn this coveted award from the United States Department of Commerce for its world-class achievements in satisfying the customer. So in a very real way, Cadillac's success is also a victory for the American consumer. Another reason why. Plays 39 yards. They kept the ball 5 minutes, 34 seconds. 30-yard field goal by Jackie. The Packers lead 3-0. Yeah, that's a good start for the Packers. It was a good drive, but as I said before, the big play on that drive had to be the tackle Ronnie Lott made on Sterling Sharp, stopping that first down and making the Packers settle for a field goal. Dexter Carter and Spencer Tillman back deep for the 49ers. Jackie set to kick it off. A little bit of a breeze behind his back, not much. It's Carter who almost broke the opening kickoff. This time he starts from the five. Out to near the 30. Let's watch that third down play again and we'll see Sterling Sharp is up on top. He's a receiver on top. There's going to be right here a little pick. Here's Sterling Sharp. Here's Ronnie Lott right there. Now watch what happens here. He reads it. Now watch a collision there, and Sterling Sharp goes four yards back. Watch the hit here. Boom, is there a first down? Nope. By the time he gets finished tackling, he takes him back four yards. 49ers with Montana leading back to throw. Made about five choices and finally threw it over the head of John Taylor. That's what he does so well. And that's what he was talking about, patience. He said that the, the Packers aren't going to put a lot of pressure on you, but they just play those eight men back there in the zone, and you have to have patience to wait until your guys get in those holes or seams of the zone to hit the underneath guys. Second and ten Second for and ten. the 49ers. Their own 29. Montana gets the trade. Maybe a gain of one. Roger Craig, who's been out, what, four weeks, three weeks? Anxious to play the next week after he got hurt. His problem was his knee. Finally, he's back. He 
was on the bus yesterday talking to us about his knee, and he says that he thinks the toughest thing for him today is going to be, one, getting the leg tired. They don't want to play him too much so the leg gets tired. But two is running sweet or any time he has to make a burst. Brent Jones is a man in motion on third and ten. Outside to a wide open Harry Sidney. 49er first down near midfield about the 48. A pickup of 19 yards. Leroy Butler made the stop. You know, the uh, Packers dropped the coverage here. No one covers Harry Sidney. But this is where Joe Montana is so good. There's a lot of quarterbacks that no one covers the guy, and they still don't find him or see him. But if you leave a guy uncovered, if you drop or break a coverage, I'll guarantee you this guy is going to find the guy you dropped or left open. So first and 10, 49ers at their own 48. Packers leading 3-0. Sidney goes in motion. To Dexter Carter. Hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked backwards by Scott Stevens. Loss of one. I tell you, that was more than a hit by Scott Steven. I mean, that was a, that was darn near something you'd call that, uh, that uh, police number for. Watch his hit. I mean, that's a perfect tackle. Then he picked him up and slung him down and drove him back, and his feet flopped over. That's a 9-1-1 tackle. It's a rag doll tackle. Yeah, that, that, that put him going back where he came from. Second and 11. Montana to throw it. Drops it out to Rathman. Rathman near a 49er first down. A pickup of nine. Not quite enough. Stopped it, by Whittington. We were talking to Brian Noble yesterday, the inside linebacker of the Packers, and he said he thinks Tom Rathman is the most underrated player on that 49er team. He said that guy's just a football player. In fact, what he called him was a gritter. Right. And I think when you look at, at, at Rathman, that's a pretty good word. He's a, a gritter from Nebraska. He has caught three today. Third down at two for the Niners. Rice goes in motion. Montana gets it out to Rice. And he gets more than enough for a first down, a gain of eight. Yeah, and that's Jerry Rice's first catch. And I think that's the thing that the 49ers always want to establish early. As I said, get the ball into his hands. Now, the way they did it, remember early in the season, he was having trouble in the, in the first game. He was having trouble with tight coverage. So they started moving him around, putting him in motion where he can't be bumped on the line of scrimmage. First and ten. Five out of seven. 49ers, Green Bay 35. That's Craig. Almost broke away from the bunch, but stopped by Johnny Hallen. Johnny Holland, make that. Yeah, you watch Roger Craig in practice yesterday. In fact, the whole 49ers, you watch them in practice, and they practice. Everything is so fast. Everything is so quick. Everything is so spirited. And I think it's kind of led by the attitude of Roger Craig there. I mean, he's a point where if he were a horse, you'd call him frisky. You know what I mean? He got that, you know, that high boom, boom, boom. And, and they practice everything at a higher level than anyone else that I ever watched. He runs everything as if it were a touchdown run. Montana to Craig at the line of scrimmage. Brian Noble. A yard, maybe two. One thing, it's tough coming back. You know, and then playing where they're where they're really going after you. You stand on the sideline, you're watching, and then you get in the game, and now you're not watching anymore. And I think Roger Craig stopped in that in the hole that time. Brian Noble made a heck of a tackle on him and fired up this whole Packer defense. Third and five. needed an extra body Gary Rice covered by Mark Lee but he was open did you That's see they only had 10 guys in the field and 
Bob Nelson was running on it. He just kept going. He just ran right up the middle. They, they, they didn't have enough guys there. Lee was beaten by Jerry Rice, and the ball was just overthrown by a half inch. Mike Kofer will try from 47 yards away to tie the game. He's 13 out of 19, including that clutch win last week to beat the Browns. 49ers moved, and that might have taken out, have taken them out of that field goal range. He would move it back five to 52 yards. Perhaps he could still reach it, but he's against the wind a little bit. And I think if it's against there, George Seifert will probably Pump decide charge, to offense, punt. Number 77, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. That's big Bubba Paris. When old Bubba gets down there and he gets moving, he just can't quite get it stopped. It's tough enough to get it started. <laughs> But once you get it started, I guarantee you can't stop it in the middle of it. And that did force the 49ers into a punting situation. So it'll be Barry Helton, whose first punt was 24 yards. Jeff Query back deep in the middle for the Packers. One thing you should never do is jump offside on a field goal attempt because you're not going anywhere. They're going to let it bounce. And it goes into the end zone. Back to the 20. 35 yard punt. The Packers lead the 49ers 3 0. America's most successful luxury automobiles the Cadillac, DeVille, and Fleetwood. Big NFL doubleheader next Sunday. And an intriguing matchup between Jerry Glanville's Falcons and Mike Ditka's Bears. Chicago running back Neil Anderson is the NFC's second leading rusher. And the first player, John Madden, has put on this year's All-Madden team based on his performance earlier this year against the Packers. He can do just about all facets of football. You know, I watch Neil Anderson, and right now, I think he's the best running back in the league. He can catch it, he can throw it, and obviously he can run with it. Good side over the right side and a flag on the play. Haley made the stop. Howard Rowe, the referee. Holding offense number 63, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Yeah, that's the center, James Campen, and he has a big job today because on running downs, he's playing against Michael Carter, and most nose tackles are loads anyway. But when you play against Michael Carter, he is a real load. Jim Burt is in there on this play. They alternate their nose tackles, but their nose tackles are always going to give these centers problems. Jim is the man in motion. Mikowski back to throw it. Complete to Ed West, his tight end, out of bounds, short of a first down, but a pickup of 19, stopped by Michael Walter. This is the thing that Mikowski can do. If you're going to rush him, you still have to keep him contained. You see, they give him a little hole right there. Then he will start up, then go sideways again, all the time looking for a receiver. He does that better than anyone I've ever seen, where... He steps up and then goes sideways again. Most guys will just go sideways and just go up. A very gifted athlete. He's three out of three today. And off Haddix. That should be enough for a Packer first down stop by Burt. Did you hear Mikowski in the middle of a sentence there? He was saying, easy, easy. He was calling cadence, and then he started saying, easy, easy. Here's what it looks like in the middle of the line. There's a nose tackle, Jim Burt. He's going against the center, James Campen. Campen, 63, is doing a pretty good job. He gets a move, and then he puts him on his back. First and 10 for the Packers. Fake is to Woodside and Mikowski. Incomplete intended for Kemp. 
Hey, that was a good play because Mikowski got outside of containment with the bootleg, had Kemp wide open, but Kemp fell down just as the ball was coming. This has to be frustrating. Watch it here. This is what a bootleg is. The backs go one way, the quarterback fakes to him, and then he's going to go out there and roll out. Now, look, he's outside containment. This really puts a bind on the defense, and this is frustration. When the guy's wide open, and he slips as the ball's coming. It rained all day here yesterday. It was supposed to snow and rain today. We got a break, however. 49ers jump, I believe, unless they were pulled offside. Look at this one here. See if they are pulled. Nothing moves. I'll tell you, Carter is going through there. Michael Carter makes a move around the center and grabbed Mikowski, but the ball was never snapped. But I'll tell you, that was still a very good, quick move. But I asked the question, how can the nose tackle be offside when you line up right in front of the ball? Second and five, unless it has something to do with the quarterback's cadence. Yeah, but you shouldn't even be listening. You always teach those guys, don't listen. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. Hey, Carter's up there paint to paint with Campbell. Darrell Thompson, the running back, dragged down by Charles Haley. Perhaps a loss of a yard. See, now watch it again. Carter's job is to hold up the middle. Watch how strong he is. He takes camp and just puts him in the backfield. Now the back runs right into his center, and Haley makes the play. See, what happens is you have to get that nose tackle going backwards. They got the center going backwards. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Packers 3. The 49ers nothing. Three nothing Packers. As we start into the second quarter at Lambeau Field, Pat Summerall with John Madden. Packer ball at their own 35. First and 10. I beg your pardon. Third down. And six. Mikowski out of the spread formation. Gets the ball to Jeff Curry. First down, Green Bay. Gain of nine. Romanowski made the stop. Yeah, they take these, these Polaroids and the shots. See, this is the team film guy. And what he is doing is he is filming the game with all 22 players. Then they also take Polaroids. Now, these Polaroids are from the end zone. They take those still shots from the end zone, send them to the bench so they can see the alignments and the adjustments. Balls at the Packer 44 in their possession. Mikowski backtracks. Sidearms it out of bounds, incomplete, nobody there. And he had to sidearm it out there because Charles Haley was breathing down his neck. I think that... You know, of all the pass rushers in the league, this guy here at 94 is one of the best athletes. He was he was pushed, knocked down, rolled over, jumped up, and still got to Mikowski. I think if you play the 49ers and you're going to pass, and that was the thing that Lindy Infante talked about yesterday, we can't let Charles Haley dominate this game. You better find out where he's lined up. Second and ten. Thompson is the setback sharp is the man in motion. Mikowski. Off to the races. Slides close to a first down. He might have it. Haley made the stop. Hey, this guy is something. This Mikowski, because he can not only throw it, but he can move and throw it, and he can run. He is very gifted. This is going to be an interesting mark here, though, because it's either going to be fourth down and very, very short, or it's going to be a first down. As I look at it from here, raw eyes, it looks like it's right on the marker. Your raw eyes are pretty good, usually. That's from a lot of years of coaching, but they give him that many inches. 
That's the only time they ever show you how far it is to go and on fourth down. And we talk about Haley and being a good athlete. The tight end blocks him, then the tackle. Then he sees the pass, but watch him burst on the ball here. He chases them all the way and gets there just as Mikowski goes down. That looked like a, a questionable spot. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, he it looked, had like, to, looked yeah. like he was to the line and they brought it back. And again, it's only third down. Third down, they're going for it, of course, on third. Jackie Harris in motion and give it to Thompson. I don't know if he got it or not. No, he didn't get it. Now is the interesting one. Now you got that fourth and short. You didn't get it on third down. What are you going to do now? Okay, that's Michael Walter who's hurt. He was just activated for this game again. He had, he had come off. Remember, he had the broken finger. They put a pin in his finger. He played again and then broke the pin out of the finger again. And this is his first game back. That time, he just got kneed in the head, it appears. Back at Lambeau Field, Michael Walter is the injured 49er. He's been a real steady player. Plays mostly on running downs. Defense, one of those inside guys, plays along with Matt Millen. Always one of the tackling leaders of this team. Led the team in tackles last year. And again, you can see that left hand is taped up. He had a couple of surgeries on it already. But that injury that he's coming off now was not part of that left hand. But he, he played a game. They put a, a pin in his finger, and he didn't even miss a game. And then... He played the next game and knocked the pin out of his finger, so they had to do another surgery on it. So the Packers back to punt it now. Don Bracken back deep. John Taylor back to return the punt for the 49ers. Good kick by Bracken. And it takes a pass that's... Uh, Makes the Packer pack very, very happy. Carl Bland down to down it at the five. A packed house at Lambeau Field. Tim Harris, who always gets involved with those in attendance, hoping that the pack Packers will make some noise. Now he looked like Hulk Hogan on that, where he gets his hand up there and saying, I can't hear you. And he's getting that crowd to know that this can put a problem with the 49ers down here on hearing. Montana rolls right. Throws to tight end Brent Jones incomplete. Hit immediately by Scott Steven. Hey, there's one fired up guy today. That's Scott Steven. We've done a couple of Packard games, and I've never seen him active like this and this, this animated. I mean, they're going after Montana. Steven is coming, and he's... Hitting guys, knocking balls out of there, flopping them around backwards, turning them upside down. Second and ten. Rice right, Taylor left. Craig in motion, Montana to throw it. Incomplete. No flag. In the direction of Taylor, covered by Jerry Holmes. Covered very well by Jerry Holmes. That's one of the toughest things to cover is that slant pattern. Jerry Holmes is one of those guys who was picked up by the Packers from Detroit and is, and is a good corner. If you look at Jerry Holmes, number 44, you wonder how he's even played in this league for nine years. He has the skinniest legs I think I've ever seen. He has to wear about five pairs of socks to keep those calves to look like a pro football player. He has a tough time keeping his shoes on even. Packers showed Montana a blitz and got out of it. Montana gets to Mike Wilson. Not enough for a first down stop by Mark Murphy. And the San Francisco 49ers will have to punt. 
Those are the two things the Packers wanted to do. Knock Joe Montana around and then make good short tackles when he hits those short passes. They did both of them on that play. Mark Murphy, a very, very solid player. And Lindy and Fonny Sims, they're going to catch some. But don't let them make big plays out of little plays. Query back deep for Green Bay. Back there by himself as the Packers have the 10 other people up on the line of scrimmage. They're trying to set up the punt return. Query signals their catch. And the Packers will take over at the 49 or 47, a 35 yard punt. And Green Bay still leads 3 to nothing. In the college football today. You know, it's worth watching Notre Dame just to watch Lockett. I'm sure there's 28 teams in this NFL that are waiting for him to get here because that guy could be a game breaker wherever he plays. Makowski, speaking of game breakers, this is Haddix inside the 40. Pickup of eight. Stopped by Kevin Fagan. You know, the one thing, when we were here yesterday, you could just see the confidence of this Green Bay team. The players, the coaching staff, they're feeling Mikowski, and then they carried that same confidence into today's game. Haddock's got a good block from Keith Uger. Camp right, sharp left. Sharp in motion. And off Haddix. Close to a first down. Stopped by Haley. Now for an NFL update. Let's send you back to New York. And Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, at Cincinnati, the New Orleans Saints having a good deal of luck running the football this afternoon. Ruben Mays from six yards out has the Saints two touchdowns up on the Bengals early in the second quarter. Let's go back to Lambeau Field. Pat and John. 59,543 on hand at Lambeau Field. The world champions came to town. The 49ers trying to win their third consecutive Super Bowl. Right now in a bit of trouble against the Packers who already lead 3-0. Mikowski straight back. From behind. Haley. Rake the ball loose. Mikowski looks like he might be injured a little bit. Looks like he got his ankle, the right ankle. That was Charles Haley who made that play. One last lunge, he came over the top. And it looked like the pressure went down on Mikowski's ankle. Because it was one of those things where he was stepping he wasn't ready to take a hit. It wasn't expected to hit. See, it comes from the backside. You see it as Haley. He's going to strip the ball. He's trying to protect it, and it looks like an ankle. The right ankle. But right, here's Charles Haley here. You'll see him come on the pass protection on the pass rush against Alan Weingrad trying to block him. Gives him a bull rush right around him goes for the strip and it going for the strip it looked like Mikowski protected the ball the pressure went on his ankle the good news for Mikowski is he did jog off the field a little he's been replaced by Anthony Dilwig on second down and off is the Haddocks and Haddocks barrels down to about the 32 a pickup of seven stopped by Romanowski that is what you call finishing off the run. Haddix gave Dave Waymer the end of it. Hey, and that makes a back feel good. I think these Packer fans feel good when they see Don Mikowski come back in there, too. It's third and five at the 49er 32. Haddix seven carries now for 27 yards. Mikowski is back. And he'll operate out of the shotgun. And off to Fontenot. No. Back to Mikowski. Haley's there with him. Mikowski circle left. 
couldn't quite come up with a catch. Yeah, what a, what, what a time to call that play after the injury. But again, I think it goes back to what an athlete Charles Haley is. We've seen him rush the passer. We've seen him knock the quarterback out of the game. Now we see him cover the quarterback, tackle the quarterback, and cause an incompletion. Plus, there's a flag on the play. Holding offense, number 35, 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. That was against Michael, Michael Haddix in the backfield, one of the best blocking running backs in the league. But I think we're watching Charles Haley. I mean, he is one inspired defensive player here today. That'll make it third and 15, and that also takes him out of field goal range. I'll tell you, this is football, though. I mean, Lambeau Field, 35 degrees, guys going after it. I know in, remember one year in the All Madden team, we picked the field and we picked this. I think this is probably the best football field in the league. No question about that. Third down. Back at the 42, McCaskey to throw it. Look out. From behind by Larry Roberts. Never saw him. Hey, uh, Larry Roberts was just activated a week ago. Watch him. He's going to come from the left side. We stop it here. Here's Larry Roberts here. Watch him. He's going to pass rush here. He start That part's the bull run. Bull, you get him going back, then get the arm, then you run by. Then when he has to hold the ball, then you come from behind. And as you make the hit, put that right hand in there and try and strip the ball. Eric Davis back deep for the 49ers. Fair catch at the 15. That's where San Francisco will take over. 34-yard punt. Packers have controlled pretty much throughout, but they only lead 3 to nothing. Well, the one guy they can't control thus far is Charles Haley. A reminder, starting next week, or next week here on CBS, it begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern Time. Atlanta, Chicago, Phoenix, Buffalo, Minnesota, Detroit, and wait, we'll be in Anaheim for the Giants' visit to the Rams. Here's Montana. Outside to his tight end, Brent Jones, very little. You Maybe see who the guy out there, there's Scott Steven out there again making the play. He was the guy the last series that forced Montana. This guy is a guy who has either developed a heck of a lot or is really fired up to play this 49er team. Two wide receivers for the Packers, Sharp and Kemp. Sterling Sharp's a vibrant guy, isn't he? Well, I think he's one of those guys that, again, if he doesn't get the ball, gets a little frustrated. He hasn't gotten the ball yet. That's to Ron Lewis, just activated. Take your pardon, Roger Craig. Lewis is 83. 49ers' first three possessions. They started at their own eight. That was a result of a penalty, their own 29, their own six. And now this one. You know, one of the problems the 49ers have been having offensively this year is that they haven't been able to rush the ball or run it. And that's the problem because it's hard to keep things together and keep drives alive. You can see here they tape in Mikowski's right ankle right over the shoe. They got Roger Craig back, the 49ers did, but... You know, even before Craig was injured, he wasn't rushing well. I mean, they were averaging like, uh, before he was hurt, they were averaging like 2.8 yards per carry, and that's all he was averaging. So then you say, well, what is it? Is it him? He lost a little weight. Is it the offensive line? You know, they haven't had that group together for a long time. Harris Barton moved from right tackle to right guard. Steve Wallace moved from left tackle to right tackle, and they got a different group in there. San Francisco today has rushed five times for a total of seven yards. Yeah, and that won't get it done. No. Third and very sh short now. What they're doing now, Pat, is they're reviewing this last play to see if Craig had both feet inbounds. He catches the ball, he comes down. That one is there, that's easy. 
was a second foot inbound. You know, it looks like the toe is inbounds and the heel's out. That's what's going on now, that review. I don't know if a toe equals a foot. Because the heel was out of bounds. I think if you're any part out of bounds, I think they're probably going to rule that out of bounds. Because you look, see the first foot goes down, that's easy. The second foot, the toe is down, but the heel is out. If the so, heel's all the way down. Yeah, if the heel is. And that official back there, you can't tell. Well, I'd never want to be an official. Play stands is called on a field. We got the person, then step out of bounds, third down. Well, a toe, uh, a, a toe's the thing. Toe's good enough. Third and inches. The heck with the heel. Where's the toe? Montana, right side. Ducks for the first down. And then should, should have it. I wonder if Bubba can get up. Look at 77. He's up, up. That's a hard thing to do when you got that weight is to get up gracefully. But if you're a big old left tackle, a big old left tackle like Bubba, you don't worry about doing anything gracefully. Well, they're going to measure again to see if Montana got it. You don't see Joe Montana running too many quarterback sneaks. First down, San Francisco. And the 49ers, this is 9 o'clock. San Francisco time when this game started and I think or, or 10 o'clock excuse me but you know they were out there 9 o'clock the pregame morning and to me and I'm not making excuses for them but they look like they just haven't gotten their wake up call yet I mean they they're not in sync and offensively they're not playing like the 49ers Dexter Carter in the backfield with Craig this time and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Scott Steven first a loss of three. The, the nose tackle gets penetration there. Watch number 79. That's Bob Nelson. He gets in the backfield. Boom, you see, he gets there. Now, he knocks McIntyre, the guard off, 62, who knocks the back off. That's kind of like a bowling thing. You hit the head pin, and then, boom, it hits some other pin. Nelson hit the center, who hit the guard, who hit the back. And that's why the play lost yard. Destroyed the play. Second down. And 13. Back at their own 23. Montana. Gets it out to Taylor. Tiger Green finally got him down. You know, I think that 10. could be the first tackle that the Green Bay Packers missed today. I think that... The 49ers haven't made this Packer defense miss. And if they did, Taylor could have been the first guy that made a miss. I don't remember him missing a tackle in the open field yet after a catch. It brings up a third and three situation. 540 left to play in the first half. The Packers leading 3-0. Montana's pass is incomplete. He's rushed by Harris. Intended for Rice. Hey, they put a lot of heat on Joe Montana. I don't know if the ball would have been complete, but Jerry Rice fell down. Watch, you get the safety blitz. There's Chuck Cecil. He's coming. Harris is in there. Montana had to throw the ball, and Jerry Rice fell down in that same spot that Terry Kemp had earlier. And so Barry Helton comes on to punt for San Francisco. Query back deep for Green Bay. Line drive kick that should set up a return of some sort. Not much. 49ers do a good job. Keith DeLong down under to make the stop. A 40-yard punt, 8-yard return. 3-0 Green Bay. In Green Bay. And everybody who is able to be at Lambeau Field via Lombardi Avenue is on the way. 
Look at those big old sausages they have here, Pat. They don't have like little hot. They have big old old things they call brat brats. <laughs> And they get here early, and they come from all... This isn't just a local team, this Green Bay. This is a state thing. That's they, exactly right. They come from all over the state. Here's McCoskey back to throw it. Again under pressure, but the pass is complete to Perry Kemp. For a gain of about 12, stopped by Darrell Pollard. And then we can see McCoskey can run and move, but he can also hang in there when stuff's flying around him. Watch as he just steps up and hangs in there and keeps looking, keeps looking. Look at all those guys all around him. He gets spun around and then comes back and finds Kemp. And Packer first and 10 at their own 46. One of the toughest things for a quarterback to step in there and look downfield and have guys rushing you and not look at them. Back again is Mikowski. Caught by Ed West. Stopped by Millen. Gain of seven. Yeah, the Packers came into this game with confidence, and then as it goes, you can just feel that they're getting more confident, can't you? Second and three. Kansas City over the Raiders. Miami continues to appear strong. Detroit over Washington. That's a surprise. That's a big surprise to me. I thought Washington may not be on the level of the Giants or the 49ers or the Bears, but I thought they were on that very next level. I think we got another review here. They're looking to see if Ed West caught that ball or if it hit the ground. This is so tough now with all these angles and replays and and everything and the ball hitting the ground at the same time the ball's caught. McCaskey has been uh, under pressure all day long mostly from Haley. And look at the book on him. Well you can see that they've sacked him twice already. They've hurried him. That means After make a throw review, when he's not ready to. Is called on the field. Completion. Second down. They've knocked him down a couple of times. They've also knocked him out of the game, but just for a play with that injured ankle. So they are putting the pressure on him, but I'll tell you, he's hanging in there. He has second and three now, with 350 left to play in the first half, and the Packers leading 3-0. Darrell Thompson, the lone setback, and the fake is to him. Mikowski has Jackie Harris. Harris. Flag on the play. Harris all the way down to the 49er 15. Darrell Pollard finally brought him down. It's going to be against the Packers because their offensive linemen are all staying back here. It's again the bootlegs. Backs go left. They sneak Jackie Harris. Their big play backup tight end rookie across the field. I'll tell you one thing. He can get open. He can catch it. And then he can run with it after he catches it. But it's all going to be brought back. Illegal use of hands, offense, number 63, hands to the face, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Yeah, that's on the center again, James Campen, who has a tough job of blocking Michael Carter and Jim Burt and all those different changes they're going to throw at him. See it right there in the end zone. You see Carter is starting to go to his left side, so he just pushes him to the left. Now, then at the end, right in the middle of the thing, he looked like he started to pull him down. Charge team, timeout. The sad thing about that is, is Mikowski was already outside. Timeout, Green Bay. 3.31 left to play first half, 3-0 Packers. Pat Summerall and John Madden at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where the Packers lead the 49ers 3-0 with 3.31 left to play. That's in the first half. Second down and 13 coming up. Packers have the ball in their own 43-yard line. There have been no turnovers 
No turnovers in this game so far. And as we talked to Lindy and Fonte yesterday, he thought that was the most important thing for this game. Murkowski back to throw. As Kemp out of bounds. By Darrell Pollard. Game I'll tell you, on that play that they called before, that umpire really threw that, that flag late after Murkowski was already outside. Let's watch Kemp here. He just runs up, stops, works to the outside, and catches the ball. Looks like Daryl Pollard was giving him a little too much ground. I don't think you have to play off Perry Kemp that much. I don't think he needs that big a cushion. Third and four. Metaski to throw it again. And does. And complete again. Close to a first down. Herman Fontno came up with the catch. Stopped by Romanowski. Gain of five. That may be enough. Herman Fontno is the is a third down bat for the Packers, and he's the guy that they bring in and try and get the ball to on those situations. They weren't sure if he could even play today. He didn't practice a play all week. It is a Green Bay first down. At the 49er 43. Darrell Thompson is a lone setback. McCaskey is 9 out of 11. Sharp on the move. Thompson. Barrels down to about the 35 before Haley. And Chet Brooks finally wrestling down. Hey, watch the right side of the Packer offensive line here again. Good movement by Mandarich in the tight end. They knocked Pierce Holt back off the line and turned them around, and that was what created the hole for Haddix. So we get the two-minute warning with the Packers on the move and leading 3-0. Right now it's pro football today in Green Bay. And that doesn't look like pro football in Green Bay. When I picked this field for the all Madden game, I didn't want luxury boxes. This is what you wanted. I mean, fans, the elements, clothes, you know, big blocks, stuff like that. Second and one, I agree. <laughs> when I have played here, it wasn't like that. Darrell Thompson, right side, attempting to get the first down, got two yards and should have it. He does have it. One thing, Tony Mandarich has, has taken a lot of heat, but he's doing a pretty good job of blocking over there today, especially against the run. Big number 77, remember a year ago, he was the second player taken in the whole draft and said he was going to do this and going to do that, and he didn't do anything. This year he came back, and I'll tell you what I respect about him. He kept his mouth shut. He just shut his mouth and went out and played. And he's playing pretty well now. He's playing pretty well today. First and ten Packers. They put Kemp in motion. Fake is Thompson. Makowski has to go in a hurry. He gets it to Jackie Harris. And Harris gets down to the 20 and another Packer first down. Trip up by Romanowski. What a gain of 12. This guy, Jackie Harris, is something. He's going to come. He starts out, he's a tight end and left. They had two tight ends. He started inside, Start stopped, and then timeout. boom, he had an option. He went back out to the outside again. Timeout, Green Bay. They have one left. Fifty-eight seconds left to play in the second quarter. And the Packers got a field goal on their first possession. And that's been the scoring. It's 3-0. Green Bay over San Francisco. Mikowski is 10 out of 12 for 104 yards. To seven different receivers. Joe Montana looks on. Here's the thing. The 49ers haven't been held scoreless, but if they don't get something going, that, that string's going to be broken. Mikowski hit by... Haley, just as he let the ball go, pass intended for Perry Kemp. Yeah, that Charles Haley, you know, we were talking to him yesterday, and he said, you know, the coaches always say you play against Mikowski and you got to and you got to keep him contained. He said that means being passive. He said what I think you got to do is you just go after him. 
He said you just go after him and tackle him and you know, you know, you know, and make him throw when he doesn't want to do it. He said, I can't stand out there being a, a cop and keeping anyone contained. And he's right. Well, he's been after him. <laughs> the full head of steam. Ball play to punt. No, nothing there. Darrell Pollard up quickly to make the stop. It'll bring up a third down. The Packers have one timeout left. And they take it. Lindy and Fondy said that he didn't want Charles Haley to dominate this game on defense. And the Packers are doing well. They have everything going for them. They're moving the ball. They haven't had any turnovers, but Haley is dominating this game on defense. They haven't found anybody to block Charles Haley yet. Hey, if I could take one player with me to, to start a, a defense, well, I'd probably, I don't know, I'd probably take Lawrence Taylor and and I'd probably take Reggie White, and then I think I'd go after Charles Haley and get him third. You'd have a pretty good nucleus, I And think. then I'd take this guy. I'd take Ronnie Lott. I think that, you know, you talk about leaders, and Joe Montana's a leader, and this guy's a leader, but Ronnie Lott, to me, is the soul of the 49ers. You keep getting those guys, and you might get back into coaching. <laughs> well, if I could, if I could get... Yeah, I started off, I get greedy, I'm going to take one player. I start off, if I could take one player, by the end up, by the time I end up talking, I already got four, and there can be more coming. Because I'd probably take Tim Harris, too, already. Well, we might give you a franchise. <laughs> you let me take whoever I want, and I'd take the franchise, too. Here's McCassie going for Sterling Sharp. Touchdown. of a catch. What a brilliant catch. Jackie for the extra point and the Packers lead it 10-0. That is certainly worth another look. This guy has speed and he has power and he has hands. But he takes it inside, sells the inside, goes back to the outside, what we call a corner pattern. The ball is up and over. He locates the ball, lays out, and makes the catch just inside the back line. I mean, that is beautiful. And I'll tell you the thing that impresses me about this guy, Sterling Sharp, is that he has fun playing the game. He loves the game. All quarterbacks love it like this when they throw a touchdown pass, too. His ankle suddenly got well. Great catch. You see, he always has a smile on his face and a ball in his hand and a cap on his head. That's, that, that's how he looks in practice on Saturday, and he's just always having fun. I mean, he's joking with everyone, and he's kind of the life of the team. Don't forget, coming up at the half, Greg and Terry with all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the NFL as Jackie is set to kick off. 38 seconds remain, first half. And the Packers up 10 nothing. Harry Sidney on the kickoff return for the 49ers. 19-yard pickup by Sidney. And the 49ers will take over just outside the 40-yard line. They have all three of their timeouts left. And this is where Joe Montana is a master, that uh, two-minute drill. I think what they're thinking here now, what they'd have to be thinking, 32 seconds, they have all their time out. They have everything. Let's get a field goal here and kind of calm this thing down and build on that. Montana will throw it and throws it quickly to Rathman. Stopped by Mark Murphy after a pickup of seven. 49ers are going to use one of those three timeouts with 22 seconds left in the first half. 
10 nothing Green Bay. Let's watch the touchdown again, Pat. Here's Sterling Sharp. He's playing against Eric Wright. Ronnie Lott can't get over. Boom, up, in, and back to the corner. Watch the moves that he makes. Coming off there with power and strength and speed. Back inside. Perfect throw by Don Mikowski. Second and three for the 49ers. Montana with back to throw for Rice, and he got it. Down to about the 23-yard line. Stopped by Murphy and Cecil. The Packers were a little confused on defense. Well, and again, you know, you, you watch Joe Montana in a two-minute drill, the end of the half, end of the game, do it so many times. The 49ers, their sideline, they know he can do it, but then after you do it so often, the other team starts to believe that you're going to do it to them. And as you pointed out, what they really had in mind was they'd like to have a touchdown, but get down there and get a field goal and settle down with that. And they're certainly within range now. I think if they could come out of here with the way they've played, I mean, the 49ers have been dead. They've been flat this first half. If they can come out of here down just 10 to 3, I think that would be a big plus for them. There's Hank Fuller, the defensive coordinator of these Packers, who has really done an outstanding job at defending the 49ers. 49ers have only made five first downs. Clock has 16 seconds left. Montana, number 16, back to throw it. Trying for the touchdown and got it to Taylor. Again, he has done it. They call Mikowski magic, but there's magic. Hey, there's 32 seconds, and you think, oh, that's not much time before Montana. It's like two hours. I mean, he just goes down. Look how calmly he does it. Looks, looks, looks all over the field. Good pass protection and a good pattern by John Taylor. Gopher for the extra point to make it 10-7. And all of a sudden, what looked like such a net 49er team is on the scoreboard. Three plays, 59 yards. 23-yard touchdown pass. Montana to Taylor. Hey, we just saw Sterling Sharp make a play and the same type of pattern. Sterling Sharp ran a corner. John Taylor ran what we call the opposite. It's a post pattern. You run down and in to the goal post. A corner is down and out to the corner of the end zone. So we saw Sharp on run, one end run the corner and then John Taylor on the other end run the post pattern. And still 11 seconds left on the clock. That's why these guys are world champions. Won two Super Bowls because they could do things like this. The minute you say they're flat, the minute you say they don't look very good, they have a drive like that. 59 yards and 27 seconds. And it sort of put a hush over the crowd, didn't it? And it put a shake in Lindy and Fonny's head. house at Lambeau Field. They're dressed comfortably. You know, I was talking about maybe rain, maybe snow today. Real cold weather. And it turned out to be a good day. Hofer's kicked off. Handled by Haley. at about the 35 with three seconds showing on the halftime clock. Three seconds left. Well, of course, I'm sure they're going to talk about one deep pass play and I think you can always hope for a completion. The other thing is a, a defensive penalty because even though there's only three seconds left, we have to remember that the half cannot end the half or the game cannot end on a defensive penalty. It's a one-minute standing line, so we'll have a full 13 minutes here and a half. Three 
seconds left to play. Packers will just sit on it. And run out to finish the first half. Packers have dominated, but it's 10 7. That's the end of the first half with a score. The Packers 10, 49ers 7. Welcome back, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw. Those of you who have been watching football being in Detroit and Green Bay, let's run down scores and highlights for you. At halftime at Lambeau Field, Packers playing a whale of a ball game lead the 49ers by a field goal. 10-7 is the score. It was a 3-0 game before Don Mikowski went up top to Sterling Sharp. If you're going to score, the thing you want to do is get man-to-man -man coverage with your best receiver. Sharp beats right, gets in the end zone for the touchdown. And then with 11 seconds to play in the first half, Joe Montana, 23 yards to John Taylor. That's how it stands now at halftime. The Packers leading the 49ers by a score of 10-7. They're also at halftime at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati where the Saints are leading the Bengals by a touchdown. And the Saints have been able to run the football today. Gil Fennerty taking a delay handoff Goes up the middle for five yards and a touchdown. Ruben Mays also scored a rushing touchdown before Boomer Esiason began to get the Bengals going. Inside notice, Boomer just staring at him. I'm surprised he was able to complete this way his eyes. If I were a defensive back, I'd have stared him, followed him. I would have made the interception. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Craig Hayward has uh, 85 yards rushing for the Saints. They lead it by a touchdown. Meanwhile, at Pittsburgh, the Falcons have been able to take advantage of turnovers and lead the Steelers at halftime by a score of 9 to nothing. At Kansas City, the Chiefs leading it at Arrowhead by two field goals. 6 to nothing is the score there. Kansas City has blocked a fifth punt on the season for them. At Miami, the Dolphins with the number one defense in the National Football League leading the Cardinals by 10 at halftime. Also, at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, the Lions by two touchdowns over the Washington Redskins. Now watch this pass by Rodney Peet. Off of number 84, Richard Johnson, Robert Clark, innocent bystander, suddenly turns into a touchdown score. Hello. 33 yards and a touchdown. The Lions led 7-0. Now Stan Humphrey's going to try to rally the Redskins. Well, he does a nice job. Notice to the left, pumps to the left, and then he's too late coming back. White is sitting right there. The ball should have never been thrown. Easy touchdown and William White. First of his NFL career. And the Lions are leading it by two touchdowns over the Redskins. Meanwhile, the New York Jets at the Meadowlands lead the Dallas Cowboys 7-6 to six on the strength of Terrence Mathis' 98-yard punt return. That ties an NFL record. It's the Jets by one over Dallas at halftime. And New England is at Philadelphia in the second quarter as they approach halftime. It's the Eagles by a field goal. The NFL today will continue on CBS after this word from your local station. Football country, football weather. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Packers leading San Francisco, 10 to 7. Okay, here's the here's a big touchdown. Remember the one to Sterling Sharp, the corner pattern. He comes inside. He's working on Eric Wright. Mikowski leads him out. Look, he locates the ball, lays out, dives, and makes a heck of a catch. Here's the other touchdown. Well, they come right back. Watch Joe Montana. He's looking to the right like he's looking to Jerry Rice. Then he comes back to John Taylor on a post pattern. And he just got that ball in there. Oh, yeah, this isn't bad coverage. Jerry Holmes is number 44. And that's about as close as you can get on coverage and not hit the ball. He threw that right hand in there. But that was a perfect pass by Joe Montana to John Taylor. Taylor those, looks the two touchdowns. Taylor coming in with a bad knee and a bad back looked okay after he caught that touchdown pass. Yeah, they were saying before the game that they uh, George Seifert said he wouldn't know until the pregame warmup whether John Taylor would play or not. They just lost uh, John Taylor's backup last week. Mike Sherrard broke his leg for the third time and is going to have surgery and have a plate put in that leg. We wish him the best. But the leg broken in an entirely different place from where it was in the first two times. This is down by the ankle. You know, it's, it's funny. The, uh, they just threw the ball out. They had a ball out there for Mike Coford to kick and he didn't like that ball so he asked him to change and they threw the football out and they gave him a new football. 
how important it is. I mean, I don't know how important it is, but to place that football perfectly on the tee, you know, so that you get it at the angle that you're going to approach and all those little things that kickers think about. Okay, in this case, since he's a soccer style, the lace is not straight in front. Kick fielded by Herman Butno. Butno. Out of bounds at the 49er 40 yard line by Daryl Pollard. 50 yard return. That is a big start. Let's look at Don Mikowski. Under 10 yards, he was 5 for 5. 6 for 9 between uh, 10 to 20 yards. That's where he did all his work, in that area under 10 and between 10 to 20. That's the pass by distance, not the run after they caught the ball. So you can see they're not trying to throw deep. They haven't gone to the big ones, but they hope to work in that area and then somewhere come up with some big plays. They got the one big one on the touchdown. They just got a big return by Herman Fontenot. Do it away. And here's the guy in that first half who's been putting on all the pressure. Charles Haley. Look, look what he's done. He's hurried three times. He's hurried Mikowski, made him throw when he didn't want to. He sacked him once. He's knocked him down once. And he has seven tackles. Now, those are good numbers for a normal guy playing a whole game. A whole game, at least. And yeah. that's only half the game. So the Packers had better get Charles Haley under control. Second and ten. Mikowski back to try to throw again. To Ed West. Seven yard gain. It'll bring up a third down. Keep DeLong made the stop. Now the tight end has become a, a, a pretty big part of this offense because you you look at the blocking, we know that they run in there behind Ed West. We just saw him catch a pass. Then the backup tight end, the other tight end, Jackie Harris, he's becoming kind of a big play, important part of this offense. So Green Bay is going to a tight end type offense. That's five catches already today by their tight end. Query in motion. Mikowski back to throw. Outside quickly. Weary knocked out of bounds just as the ball got there by Don Griffin. Not enough for a first down. But they, they did all that running and all that thing. You know, Jeff Query is the fastest guy in the team, so they're trying to get some picks going and get him free. He didn't get free at all, and the ball was about a, a one-yard pass, but it wasn't complete anyway because he lost it, yeah. Griffin hit him and the ball and everything went flying, including the hair out of the back of his helmet. <laughs> Don Bracken back to punt for Green Bay. Davis back deep for the 49ers. High, high kick. Takes a favorable bounce for the 49ers. It landed about the five-yard line and bounced all the way back to about the 14. 10-7. Back in Green Bay, 13-44 left third quarter. The Packers ahead of the 49ers, 10-7. Green Bay's record three and four coming in. 49ers unbeaten. They haven't lost in 350 days since the Packers beat them last year. And off the tray, chase and downed outside by Johnny Holland. No gain. I'll tell you, Joe Montana, we have to look at his passing here because they haven't been able to do it with the run. He's the master at that under 10. 7 to 9, 7 out of 9, 10 to 20, 3 for 6, a couple of deep ones, 2 out of 3. But Joe Montana is usually going to work that short area or those short areas. That really, for them, takes the place of some of the place of the running game. Here's Montana. Out of the pocket and off with it. First down. 
Yeah, that's one thing that Joe Montana hasn't done in years. Remember since he had the back surgery, he used to roll or sprint or escape or scramble a lot to the left. Since that, most of his running has been to the right. And you very seldom see him go to the left. And teams know that, so if teams are going to flush him somewhere, they always try and flush him to his left. Of course, he took the flush and got a first down with it. He just became the leading rusher for San Francisco in this game. That's their longest run of the day, 15 yards by Montana. Back to throw it again, quick blitz. Trey can't hang on and hang on. Yeah, their running game uh, has has been non-existent today, but it hasn't been uh, for most of the season. That's been a problem, and I think when you have a team like the 49ers and they're you know going for a three-peat and all this stuff, you're looking at stuff to pick or nitpick. And the two things that you can pick on the 49ers for is offensively their lack of running and their pass defense this year isn't what it used to be. Second and ten. changing things around one of the things he said about the Packers was they disguise their coverages very well however Montana got it to Rice Jerry Holmes the cover man but a 51 yard pickup and that was an audible that's the amazing thing about it, it was an audible he had to call it he changed the play on the line of scrimmage he must have saw out there, he's looking all the way for Jerry Rice for the deep one. That's Jerry Holmes going man-to-man. -man. Holmes even grabs him there. That could have been pass interference, but once you're beaten, then you may as well go for anything you can get. You know, we talk about Joe Montana maybe being the greatest quarterback that ever played. That guy that just caught that one could be the greatest receiver that ever played this game. Could be. He's closing in on one of the Packer greats. That would be Don Hudson. That's Dexter Carter, left side flag on the play. You know, it's funny, Pat. You never used to see holding on running plays. And now it seems like we see it more and more. In fact, we just looked at a stat, and I think there's this year there's twice as many holds on running plays as Hold. passing plays. Number 62, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. And I don't understand that. I'm not sure why that is, but... I remember in the old days, they never called holding penalties on running plays. It was always on the pass play. It was always on the pass play, and now it's darn near just the opposite. They let them get away with anything on pass protection, and they're very picky on the running game. First down and 20. Balls at the 30. Williams in motion this time, and the pass is to Rice again. Down to the 15, maybe 14. Stopped by Tim Harris. Now here's where Joe Montana is at his best, even when he doesn't have a running game going. When he gets protection, and he gets those things going, and he just stands back there and does it so effortlessly. That's the thing that's always impressed me about him. You know, watch one, how quickly he gets away from the line of scrimmage. How quickly that big right step, he separates himself. Now look at this protection. He just stands there and boom, looks for that open guy. Rice over 100 yards receiving now. Four catches. Second down, Montana. With a lot of time and a lot of room. And out of bounds. At about the 18, a gain of only one. Hey, Brian Noble, number 91, had him zeroed in there. He was going to take a shot. He was telling us yesterday that one of the reasons he gets so fired up against these 49ers that he says, you know Joe Montana is going to be in the Hall of Fame, and you know Jerry Rice is going to be in the Hall of Fame, and Roger Craig, and he said, I know that I'm not going to be in the Hall of Fame, but if I can get a good hit on these guys... <laughs> I can remember that the rest of my life. And he was zeroing in on Montana that time. Third down and three. At the Packer 13, Montana again to throw it. Lost it for Rice out of the end zone. 
tried to get his feet down as well as he could. Again, Montana running to the right there, throwing on the run. Now he has to, Jerry Rice has to have both feet in. He had neither. That's Brian Noble, who had Montana zeroed in two plays ago, who's now shaken up a bit. They said, you know, if when these guys go in the Hall of Fame and you're sitting around on a porch in a rocking chair, you can say, yep, I remember zeroing in on that guy and tackling him in Lambeau Field. Ten seven, the Packers lead to the 49ers. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Lambeau Field. Hofer from 30 yards away will try to tie things up. Good hold appears to be. The only thing wrong is the kick is no good. Kickers will drive coaches crazy. He looked like he just looked up and shanked that one like a golf shot. Makes that side happy. He looked like he jerked his head up. That's the way I play golf. I stand over the ball, my head's down, everything is ready, and then just when I go to hit it, I jerk my head up. Just like that. And that'll just bring that ball choop, just right around there. Then you put your head down like that. You jerk it up, you miss it, and boom, you put it down. You can pretty well tell right away if you just watch the kicker. McCaskey. Vince Workman was the running back, picked up four. Don't forget, next Sunday it begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today with Greg and Terry, Leslie and Pat O'Brien. Atlanta, Chicago, Phoenix, Buffalo, Minnesota at Detroit. The Lions winning over Washington big today. And the Giants go to the Rams. Green Bay visits the West Coast also to play the Raiders. Second and six. Thompson and Workman are the two running backs. Workman, the fake. Kowski kept it. And he was hit by Haley. And let's go again back to New York Studios. And Greg Gumbel for an NFL update. All right, Pat, Detroit is just walking all over the Redskins today, or running is a better term for it. Barry Sanders, 45 yards up the middle to the end zone. Third quarter, 35-14, Lions lead the Skins. Back to Pat and John. Boy, that's an even bigger shocker. The Lions dominating like that. Sterling Sharp didn't see him get hit. That was a play before, and he just uh, yeah, he just came limping off the field, limping with both legs. Maybe it's just cramps. Third and six. Kowski has time this time. Finds his receiver. Charles Wilson, who will end the infant, he said, we have to get into the game. Well, you know, and that's how they got Charles Wilson into the game, because... Sterling Sharp was injured and had to go out. And as you said, Lindy and Fonny says, we have four receivers playing a lot. And he said, this guy is looking so great in practice. And anytime we put him in a game, he said, we just have to find a way to get him on the field. And it's ironic the way that he got on the field was an injury or cramps anyway to Sterling Sharp. Packer first down. At their own 36. Workman split wide to the left. Thompson inside. Defense led by Charles Haley again. No gain. Hey, this Charles Haley is all over the field. You know, he's had a, a groin problem. So they weren't even sure if he was going to play or how much. But just what? You cannot run away from him and not block him. He's one of those guys. Lawrence Taylor is like that, and people finally learned him. If he's left and you're right, you still got to block him because he can catch you from behind. Got an assist from Kevin Fagan that time. Second and ten. Outside to Thompson. Hit right at the line of 
scrimmage maybe behind it. Romanowski out there with him. That is a heck of a tackle. You know, uh, we were talking to George Seifer, and he was saying that Romanowski is becoming more comfortable now as a linebacker and a starter. He's always been a good guy against the run. He's always been an aggressive guy. He's always been a tough guy, but he really has the feeling now of the team defense, and, and that tackle was the way you draw him up. Third and ten now for the Packers. Third. On 36. They lead 10-7. Third quarter. 6.45 left to play in the third. High snap. Mikowski gets it down. Off to run. Not enough for the first down. Again, it's Romanowski. Six yards on the scramble. That's why it's good to have a, a, a good athlete, a quarterback, because that ball came sailing out of there. Mikowski had to make a got first to catching it then he didn't have anything open he saw a hole and and, and running there Don Bracken back deep to punt Eric Davis back deep for the 49ers this one not his best you better get away from it you never stand around the ball when he's rolling Look at Davis, that's, that's, that's a dumb mistake. When you're not going to catch it, you get away from it. Because if that ball touched Davis, it could have been the Packers ball right there. We saw it happen against the Redskins this year in their first meeting with the Giants. 5.56 left to play third quarter. Green Bay 10, San Francisco 7. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Well, the Packers lead the 49ers, the world champions. 10-7 with 5.56 left to play in the third quarter. 49er ball at their own 23. Tanner back to throw it. Blitz is on. Pass almost picked off and is not. Mark Lee had it, juggled it, dropped it. You want to see a street move, Pat? Remember Eric Davis, number 25, the 49ers, when the ball's there, you got to run away. You get away, but now watch Blair Bush, number 51. He pulls him in. Davis was trying to get away. Blair Bush pulled him in and pushed him in there and trying to get him to touch the ball. Blair Bush is a 13-year veteran. Eric Davis is a rookie. That was a heck of an experienced move. Second and ten. Experience, huh? I, I like, like street. that. I like street better. That's Dexter Carter with the screen pass from Montana and a first down. Mark Lee finally knocked him out of bounds. 27 yard pickup on the screen pass. Here's a screen pass. And one thing about these guys like Dexter Carter, they drafted him to be like Dave Megan. And you can, they can be great screen runners. You get them outside quickly, you get two blockers out in front of them, and then they're out there in the open space. They're not working in there against those big defensive linemen. The 49ers and Guy McIntyre, they have one of the best open field blockers in the game. First and 10 at the 49. Rice on the move. Montana back. Looking. Tight end Brent Jones down to the 20. Knocked out of bounds by Mark Lee. A pickup of 31 yards. Joe Montana has to do it the hard way. He has very good protection. Look at the vision he has. He sees everything, finds his tight end there over a linebacker in front of the secondary. But the reason I say he has to do it the hard way is he has no running game whatsoever. But he does have excellent, excellent pass protection and some receivers who can get open for him. First and 10 for 49ers at the 20-yard line of Green Bay. Carter. First backwards. Led by Brian Noble. These are guys like Carter have, have trouble getting inside, but look at their, their rushing game. In 1990, in this season, they only have three touchdowns. And they're only averaging 88 yards a game. 
and you look what it was in 87, 88, and 89. So if they have fallen down anywhere offensively in the first half of the season, it's that running game. And today, they've rushed 11 times and gained 25 yards. Montana drops the throw. Has the ball batted down by Bob Nelson. Luckily, Nelson was there because Dexter Carter was wide open, and he was the guy he was throwing to. Look at, look at player push 51 there. He's explaining to camp and what he did. That I had him, I pulled him, I tried to get him over. He's, he's whispering to him. He doesn't want anyone to know it was a street <laughs> move. See? Two all centers get together and say, hey, you should have saw what I just did after. They know a lot about street moves. <laughs> it is big tobacco. Third down. Over the middle quickly to Brent Jones, but a flag on the play. That was a 13-yard pickup. Jones stopped by Chuck Cecil. Look at Tim Harris. He's fired up. He either saw the hold or the hold was against him. Illegal hands, number 74, jammed to the face offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. Had to be against him. You know, I think both tackles, here's 74 right here, that's Wallace, but it looks like Paris does the same thing. Their first move, instead of to the shoulder pads, boom, is right up there to the face. That's what they called him there, and they had it, look, look. Harris is doing it up here, and it's already been done down on that side. So that's the old double dipper to the face. Third and 18. Montana pushed out of the pocket. Still finds Rice. Inside the 10, Tiger Green was the nearest Packer defender, but a first down San Francisco. First and goal it'll be. You show me another quarterback that can do that, and I'd wonder who that would be. That was a heck of a play. I mean, he was going down. He was going sideways, came up. One thing Montana always knows, he always knows where his guys are. But watch this. He's getting a rush. Now he runs out a little to the left. He's throwing between two guys, and it ends up with a pass like that. First and goal from the eight. Montana fake. Intended Rathman. Incomplete. Montana was hit by Matt Brock. In fact, he's pointing to Matt Brock. He was looking over in the sideline, pointing to Matt Brock and saying, hey, no one blocked 62. Matt Brock's a big, strong guy, a two-gapper, what they call a two-gapper two gap where you just play into the tackle and you have two holes, the hole to your inside and the hole to your outside of your responsibility. Second and goal. Hand off to Carter. Stop at about the five, a pickup of three. Noble again on the tackle. Noble is an underrated guy. You know, we, when you talk about run, you're not going to get much running in there. Watch him. He'll just scoop up Carter. Watch him. He just kind of picks him up and just knees him back, pushes him back a little bit. You don't get a lot of running inside when you have Noble in there and Bob Nelson playing like that. You got a two-gapper and an inside linebacker just playing run. Third and goal from the five. Montana is hit just as he let it go. Still gets rid of the ball. And the pass is incomplete. Matt Brock hit Montana. Oh, they're going to review this one. Rathman believes he caught it. Guy McIntyre is down there arguing that he caught it. Jesse Sapolo is down there. I've never seen offensive linemen down there arguing that the pass was caught. Now, you wonder here if this was in the grass. But it's not in the grass if the referee doesn't blow the whistle. Because that wasn't even called. So the thing we're looking for right here is the catch. I don't know. That, that's a tough one. We see more and more of that. But that looked like a catch at the beginning of a catch anyway. And then his body 
blocked out our angle. I believe that they have to look at that one. I mean, I don't think they can say that that was just an incomplete pass. There's a ball out there. His shoulder blocks that angle out. Yeah, we see more and more of these things, Pat. Yep. You know, where they fall. After further review, and he hits the hands stands, and everything simultaneously. And some tape brings up fourth down. It's been ruled incomplete. And it's fourth down, Kofer. The 49ers have had some problem. Remember, Bubba Paris was offside on a field goal, and Kofer missed his last one. This one from 22 yards out. And this one's good. And we have a tie. Packers 10, 40, Niners 10. 2.40 left to play in the third quarter. Back here at Lambeau Field, Kofer kicks off to Charles Wilson. Wilson out of bounds at about the 23 by Darrell Pollard. I can see why Lindy and Fonny wants to get the ball to this Wilson guy. I mean, he looks like every time he catches it, he expects to go all the way. He gets upset when he doesn't go, but if I had a guy like that, I think I'd want to get him in there, too. He'll rest for a while as Sterling Sharp is back in the action now for Green Bay. 10-10 tie. Near the end of the third quarter, 229 left to play. The big thing with this Green Bay offense today is they haven't had any turnovers. That's the major thing that they wanted to avoid. That's the first thing everyone said that we talked to. Right off to Haddix. Nothing there. Would be a fumble. For an update, let's go back to Greg Gumbel in New York. Well, let's don't. Let's see who's got the football here first. Fumble by Haddix, and the 49ers come up with it. You, know, you hate to say that, but I was just saying the one thing they haven't had is a turnover, and on the very next play, they get their first fumble. But it all started with Michael Carter. Michael Carter got the penetration. You don't know when the whistle blew. It looked like both knees were down before it came out. But if the whistle didn't blow, then the ball is still alive. This one, I'm sure, is going to be reviewed as well. Well, what they're going to say is, 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 is when the whistle blew, but watch watch the job that Michael Carter does. He gets the penetration, and it's going to happen right there. He makes the play. Now, when the knees go down, the whistle should blow. So when the knees went down, he hadn't fumbled yet. So he's down when his knees go down. He fumbled later. But what they're going to say is they could say that they blew the whistle that the whistle hadn't blown when his knees went down forty nine er offensive unit already on the field so is the Packer defense but they're still looking yeah if you look right there in the far right is where it happens but again the thing is it wasn't a fumble really because his knees were down so then it's going to have to go to when the whistle blew. And they're going to reverse this. Packer offense back on the field. And here comes the 49er defense. There's been a reversal. Runners ruled down by contact. Brings up second down. Well, he was down by contact. Yes, he was. But the other thing I still go back to, that that's not automatic. You see, that has to be down by contact with the whistle blowing. Usually the officials down on the field say, hey, it doesn't make any difference. I didn't blow the whistle until after the ball was out. It brings up second and 10. Packers at their own 25. Mikowski. Hit by Dennis Brown. There's big Dennis Brown. He was the number one draft choice, a top draft choice, number one or two for the 49ers out of the University of Washington. They felt that they needed a 
a defensive lineman, so they got a big one, and there is a big guy that can move. I mean, when he grows up, he's going to he's going <laughs> to fill up. He's going to be a two gapper. He's going to line up in a guy and end up covering two gaps. It's the third sack of the day by the 49ers on McCaskey, who now operates out of the spread formation. Third and 19. Blitz coming. McCaskey up into the pocket, incomplete. Now for that update. Let's send you to Greg Gumbel back in our New York studio. All right, Pat, at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, Bubby Brister has thrown his second touchdown pass of the day. Mike Malarkey gets a nice block at the goal line from Lewis Lips. It's 14-9 Steelers, fourth quarter. Pat and John. A minute 16 remains in the third quarter. Don Bracken back to punt for the Packers, standing right on his own goal line. John Taylor back deep for the 49ers. Not much. Taylor signals fair catch. Can't even get up to it. Packers down it at the 42-yard line. Boy, that was an ugly punt. I've never. That looked like the last shot out of a Roman candle. He didn't even kick that. He didn't get any oomph in it or anything. Didn't even sound right. 27 <laughs> yards. Scoring summary for the Packers. Jackie a 30-yard field goal. Then a pass from McCaskey to Sharp from 20 yards away. At that point, they led 10-0. 49ers. That's how they got even. Montana to Taylor and Kofer field goal. First and 10, San Francisco. Montana back to throw on first down. Incomplete intended for Taylor. Uh, they, they had Jerry Rice streaking down through the through the end zone. He he is the one that ran everyone off, and that's why there was so much room underneath for John Taylor because Jerry Rice came streaking down the field, and he took about four Packer defenders with him, and then John Taylor came underneath. Makes it second and ten. Taylor and Rice both split to the left. Rats running free behind Montana. Looks like another audible. To Taylor. Knocked out of bounds by Jerry Holmes. We're watching the master here today. We just look at the way that he spreads it around. He's thrown seven to his running backs for 84 yards, eight to his wide receivers. That's 164 yards, and two to his tight ends for 34 yards. So Montana not only does it well, but he keeps them all happy. And that's very important. He's back to throw it again. Out to his running back, Tom Rathman. Rathman down to about... 17-yard line, a gain of 11. Rathman's face mask looks good. You know, he has to change the face mask. He breaks the face mask like every week. And you can see those bars there. Now, in this game, he hasn't been used much. He hasn't been a lot of blocking because they haven't running. Uh, he's just been used as a pass receiver. So his face mask and helmet looks more like a pass receiver's today than old Tom Rathman, the blood and gut gritter. I like it. Blood and gut gritter. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Packers 10, the 49ers 10. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Lambeau Field, the Packers and the 49ers. Francisco now has 13 first downs to the Packers 11. 307 yards throwing for the 49ers to 124. 184 make that for Green Bay. Here's Montana. Flushed out of the pocket. Hit from behind. Still gets rid of it to Brent Jones. He is amazing. Yeah, the thing is that, that Joe Montana sees so many things. Just watch him. Let's just watch it. You know, People say, what makes Montana, Montana? 
And I, I think this is what it is, that he goes back there and calmly sees everything. You look at him, he's looking, 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 nothing open, move, move, keep looking. Look at that head's on a swivel, the eyes are always moving. First and goal from the six, Rathman down to about the three. Stopped by Brian Noble. Look at that helmet. You know, Lindy and Fanny was saying yesterday what makes Montana so great is he has fly eyes. Uh, and he I can think, see everywhere. I think we just saw it on that last play. I mean, he was seeing left and right and, and all over and then moving and still seeing. Although I do think he hurt himself somehow in that last play. After that last play, which was a running play, he came up limping. I bet you someone stepped on his toe. Second and goal at the three. Rathman again. Hit behind the line of scrimmage by Mark Murphy. A loss of three. There's a guy who's a solid player, Mark Murphy. He's a strong safety. Very solid. You're not going to fool him. Noble plugs the inside. Steven has the outside. Watch 37. His job is to force the run. Force and contain. And he was up there to force and contain and cause the loss. Third and goal from the six. This is definitely a passing down. This is, when you get down at third and six, this, this is a big, big, this is a long yardage. Craig and Rathman are the backs. Rathman in motion. Fake to Craig. Cuts down to Brent Jones. Again, he looked left, looked right, and then looked back in the middle and found the tight end. And just knows where all his guys are. I mean, he has he has such great presence. I mean, he's moving there, and not only is he looking, but he knows where they all are. This is a bootleg. Fakes it back, going to the left. He's looking back. He's trying to throw back. Then he looks middle, and he ends up throwing right a perfect strike to Brent Jones. I mean, that's the greatness of Joe Montana. I mean, there's a lot of guys that could throw better or stronger or whatever, but being able to feel, see, and know where your guys are, no one's better. The extra point by Kofor is good, and the 49ers have taken the lead by 17-10 to 10 over Green Bay. Montana, 21 out of 34, 324 yards, two touchdowns. Regular day for him. Let's watch the last touchdown. We see Montana is going to come out on a bootleg. Now, when he goes in motion, he's trying to hit him back here as he bootlegs, and then he finally finds Brent Jones in there. But watch how he sees. There goes the motion, man. Now, the guy he fakes to, the back he fakes to right here, he's trying to throw back out here to him. He couldn't do it, and he finds Jones in the end zone. But that was like Brent Jones was like the, the third receiver on that play. So with 12.45 left to play, the unbeaten 49ers have the lead at 17-10. Gophers kick, goes to Wilson. I beg your pardon, it's Workman now. Workman out of bounds at about the 29. It is a surprise that Cincinnati, you never know, you know, if they're going to have a big game one way or the other. An old rivalry game that uh, uh, Chiefs and the Raiders, I remember. When oh, I bet. We used to play those against Hank Scram and those Chief games. Oof. You know, the Eagles aren't out of the hunt. When you no, look at this wild no. card situation, uh, Buddy Ryan kept saying, well, we're going to be in the playoffs, and everyone said, oh, yeah, that's just old buddy talking, but uh, I think somewhere you have to listen to that. Here's Mikowski. Going deep and almost intercepted. He was hit, the, hit just as he let it go. Knocked down by Don Griffin. Oh, he was sandwiched there, Pat. He was whipsawed. He got hit from the front to back and underneath. That is something just as he threw that ball. Watch this one, and you know that Charles Haley's going to be involved in it because he's been back there all day. They're double teaming him. They're going everywhere. But watch what happens to Mikowski at the end of the play. 
He's going to get hit from the top and the bottom and both sides, one by Haley and the other by Michael Carter. And you know Bukowski's going to give in that situation. But when Carter hits you, that cleans the sinuses out. Here he is back to throw again and going deep. Got a man. Sterling Sharp. Griffin was the defender, but McCaskey got it to Sharp. Another great catch by Sterling Sharp. I mean, we remember the first one that he, that he caught and he scored the touchdown on where he laid out. Watch him here, right by Griffin, run by everyone. Watch him locate the ball over his head and again lay out and catch that ball. Hey, this is one of the exciting players in this league. You know, when he was in college at South Carolina, Bobby Beathard telling me the best player in the nation is Sterling Sharp. I said, Bobby, I don't know the guy. I don't know what they can be looking at here, but I guess they are. I mean, he catches this. I don't know. I mean, they could be looking if it came out or something like that, but that's a catch. A man makes a play like that, you got to give him a catch. You don't even look at that. That was good for 37 yards. And Sterling Sharp telling Mikowski, did you see him? He, he got that uh, cap tip back there, and he just gave him a nod. Yeah, it's okay. We got that one. I mean, you should. You run by everyone. You locate the ball like a center fielder. You make a catch like that. I wouldn't even look at that. That that doesn't go on instant replay. That goes on a highlight film. They take a lot of players back here. You know, we talked about some defensive players. I think if I could take a couple of receivers, I may take the two that are playing in this you, game. You wouldn't make any mistake. Sterling I know that. Sharp and uh, and Jerry Rice. And if they say that that play doesn't stay, then they're gonna they're gonna have some they gotta check some cards here or something. Good for 37 yards, 11:44 remaining in the game. After further review, play stands is called on the field. Completion, first down. Yep, put that one in the highlight reel where it belongs. But that was just that, you know, that's a heck of a throw by Mikowski, too, because he just got, remember the play before that, he got good sword, got knocked off his axis. Sharp is wide left this time, Kemp wide right. Handoff is to Haddix, close to the 30-yard line of San Francisco. Four-yard gain, stopped by Keith DeLong. You know, it's funny how this crowd is quieted down. Yeah. They were making a lot of noise, and then the 49ers came back, and they went quiet, and now they can see it's 17 to 10, and and their Packers are making another drive. There's, there's they want to kind of let loose. They want to make some noise, but it's kind of control fury, fury, control, control some and whatever they got inside. It's under control now. Daryl Thompson is the running back now. Sharp is the man in motion, and he's going to run a reverse. And out of bounds after about a three-yard pickup knocked out by Romanowski. Now Lindy Infante has to come up with a play here. You know, it's interesting. George Seifert said that Lindy Infante calls great plays, calls a great game. Of course, Lindy Infante beat him last year. But they remember all the way back, George Seifert was the defensive coordinator at Stanford when Lindy Infante was the offensive uh, coordinator at Tulane and Tulane beat Stanford. And Seifert said he remembered him calling plays against him back then. Murray comes in motion, McCaskey back to throw it, a flag on the play. Flags all over the place. Whistles all over the place. Left guard move. Prior to the snap, ball start. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. That's old Rich Moran from, from Pleasanton, California out there. He's He's been a 49er fan. He grew up right there in the Bay Area where the 49ers are from. His dad, Jim Moran, used to play for the New York Giants. He's here today with his family. And old Rich, he, he, he played in the same high school my sons did. You watched him grow up, huh? Yeah, I did. I watched him grow up. I told him to be a center. I wanted... I told him to start snapping, 
be a center, you'll have a job all your life, and they made a guard out of him. Well, at least he's got a center's number, 57. Here's Mikowski. Weathers out of bounds at about the 12 wide open. Knocked out finally by Eric Wright. A pickup of 20. Good pass protection. Good pass protection. Watch the guy. Watch Moran there. He's on Roberts. He holds him. He gives that, that block right there that Moran made. We were just talking about Moran. That was a block that Mikowski could step up right where Moran was and hit Clarence Weathers. Sometimes guards not only give you pass protection to keep the guy out, but they also give you lanes to throw in. First and 10, Green Bay. And the 49er 12. San Francisco leading by a touchdown. Handoff is to Woodside, and he is hit back at the 15. Matt Millen led the defense. You're not going to get Matt Millen on a, on, a, on a cutback. He knows that. Here's Matt Millen right here. Now, when the ball starts this way, he is going to play that from inside out and not overrun that thing. But watch him as the ball starts there, how he plays it and always stays inside it. See right there? He stays inside. So when you start to cut back, he's going to be there. If you cut back that slow, they're all going to be there. Second and 13. Mikowski intended for Woodside incomplete and Don Griffin was trying to take that one 90 yards he was reading that one if he picks that one off that would have been an interesting sprint up the sideline would have been all over that's when you try not to throw that thing across the field like that there are very through very few quarterbacks that can throw a short pass all the way across the field that makes it worthwhile. Third and 12 now. Charge Back at the 13. Timeout. timeout, Green Bay. Mikowski, 16 out of 20, 25. 8.35 left. 49ers by seven. Back in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Packers and the 49ers. Packers trailing by a touchdown, 17-10. Have it third and 13 at the 49er 14. Mikowski from the spread. Under the heat and down he goes. By Romanowski. I think this is one here that... You know that they have to kick the field goal. They can't uh, go for it here. And if we just look and see what Mikowski sees, you see he's looking up. Now he thinks he sees a hole right there that he can run in this lane. There is no lane here. You look, this is what he's looking at down there. He has nothing down there. Good coverage. And he had to run that one. There was just nothing there at all. No run and no place to pass it. From 37 yards out by Jackie. And it's good. Here at Lambeau Field, that makes it the 49ers 17, Green Bay 13. 8-17, plenty of time left. 37 yards for Jackie. And some of the other scores around the league. New Orleans, strange team, playing a strange team. With the Saints lead 21-7. Kansas City 9-7 over the Raiders. About what you'd expect. Miami 23, Phoenix 3. A rejuvenated defense for the Dolphins. Washington moves a little bit closer. Jets over Dallas 17-9 now. Philadelphia, as John Madden said a moment ago, a team not to forget about. 34-13 over New England. As long as they have Randall Cunningham on offense and Reggie White on defense, they can make things happen on both sides of the ball. Chris Jackie to kick it off. Dexter Carter back deep for the 49ers. 17-13. San Francisco lead. Good kick. 
right at the goal line. Carter up to the 30. Johnny Holland tripped him up. Yeah, we were talking to Lindy and Fonny yesterday about Joe Montana, and these are the things he said about him. The experience, the, the presence of mind that we've seen all day, the poise, you just look at the way he moves, mobile. We've seen him run right, left, great vision. We've seen him come to the third, fourth, and fifth receiver. And, and the pressure part, no matter how much pressure, he always knows where it's coming from and how to get away from it. He said he may not have that, that strong an arm, but he doesn't need it with all those other things. That's Carter. Brian Noble. Hey, you talk about the things about Joe Montana. He's won four Super Bowls. He's been MVPs. He's going for a three-peat. But here's another notch. With another yard passing, he is going to pass John Hadel, and he'll become the fifth all-time quarterback in passing yards. That other group was a pretty good group. Yeah, there. I'll say. Second and five. Seven and a half minutes remain. Montana. For Rathman dropped. Sean Patterson. Hurried Montana. You watch, he's the, he's the athlete of the group, Sean Patterson. If, if, the, if they have a pass-rushing defensive lineman, it's 96. And you saw him beat number 77, Bubba Paris. He hit into Bubba. Then he took the inside, but he's the guy with the speed and the quickness and the agility and those types of things. And if he can stay healthy, he's what the Packers need. Third down, they need to get just past the 40. Montana gets it to Rice, and he's gone. They can turn something into nothing so quickly, or nothing into something so quickly. That was the thing that the Packers were worried about, taking that short pass, that short pass and make it into a big one. We talked about Joe Montana just needed one more yard to pass John Hadel. Well, if you're going to do it, you might as well take a big bunch with you. He passed a lot of them. But did you see Jerry Rice explode oh, after boy. he caught that ball? I mean, he looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Rice, six catches for 187 yards. And that touchdown. Kofer for the extra point. Which is good. So with 7-16 left to play, 49ers lead 24-13. Watch this. Now Jerry Rice not only knows what's in front of him, the goal line, but he keeps checking over his shoulder. You know, at the end, Pat, these guys are always so cool and they look so cool, but they're not when they're running for touchdowns. <laughs> now, now's the time to laugh. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, he knew where everyone was, not only in front of him and along his side, but behind him. Vince Workman returning the kick for the Packers. Tonight on CBS, Saddam Hussein's best kept secret is a uranium mine hidden away inside a mountain. But you know 60 Minutes, they can't keep a secret. They'll show it to you tonight. Followed by Murder, she wrote. And then the CBS Sunday movie, 83 Hours Till Dawn. That's tonight here on CBS. Have a good night's sleep. <laughs> First and 10 Packers, their own 28. At one point, they led 10-0. Now they trail 24-13. Mikowski back to throw. Incomplete. In the direction of Sterling Sharp. Yeah, it's it's funny. The the Packers have really played 
as well today I think as they're capable of and and that's what happens when you play against a team like the 49ers and they're not playing their best they're not there yet but but they have the ingredients to get there and I think the Packers have the ingredients to you know to just keep plugging along and and you know getting some wins here upsetting some people and maybe being there at the end hand off to Fontenot he got about five yards before he stopped by Romanowski and Wright. The Packers now are going to a hurry-up offense, down 24 to 13. Of course, they they have to think in terms of two scores with six minutes and 45 seconds to go. McCaskey finally does get rid of it. The pick to Perry Camp and a first down. A gain of 13, knocked out of bounds by Eric Davis. Again, no huddle. I think it was Pierce Holt just broke right through there and took a swipe at McCaskey and missed him. McCaskey deep to Perry. Inside the 30. Stopped by Lot. 25 yard gain. See, they're putting pressure on him. They're getting good pass protection now, letting him stand up and find Query down there. Again, going with no huddle. Pass is caught by Weathers. Another Packer first down. 12 yard gain, stopped by Weimer. Another time, Dennis Brown hit Mikowski just as he threw it. The 49ers are getting awfully close on this pass rush, but Mikowski is just getting the ball out of there. Out of the end zone in the direction of Weathers, but he just got rid of it. Well, Weathers was double covered down there and he had nothing to do and he was getting the, the pressure and he couldn't hold it any longer. He didn't want to try and throw it to Weathers again because of the double coverage. Clock stopped with 5.16 left to play. San Francisco leading 24-13. There's a couple of guys that have played a heck of a game today. Michael Carter, the nose tackle, one of the best in the game and, and Charles Haley who only knows one way to go, and that's in hot pursuit of any guy called the quarterback. Mikowski flushed out of the pocket. Kassar, Green Bay touchdown. Competitor, what a competitor Don Mikowski is. What a competitor Sterling Sharp is. Talk about a guy who can catch the ball, get open, and he's smart. See him, he put both hands around that ball. There was no way after he did this, and then he did this, that he was going to let that ball come flying out of there. Extra point by Jackie is good. Still. Five minutes, ten seconds remain. San Francisco lead leads by four now. And the 49ers are in a fight here in Green Bay. The Packers are lining up there for their kickoff. I don't think that this is an onside kick situation. Still, I think with five minutes to go, you I, don't onside kick. I think you're right. No onside kick yet. Sharp has four catches, 80 yards, two touchdowns. They went 72 yards in seven plays. But how would you like to have that to be able to have have Sharp and Rice on the same team? You probably don't need it, but we have seen, you know, some of the, the best players in the league here, and 
two of them are those wide receivers today in Sterling Sharp and Jerry Rice. Dexter Carter back deep for the 49ers. Jackie's kickoff. You know, sometimes that brings out. Sometimes Rice scores a touchdown on one end, and that pumps up the Sterling Sharp to get one on the other end. Short kick. Tillman will handle it. Get down at about the 30 by the Packers, led by Jerry Woods. 14-yard return. You know, we've seen good, solid football played here today. You know, uh, high intensity, good tackling, no turnovers. Again, this is a, about as well. The Packers can't play any better than they played today. We yeah. thought it would be a passing game. It is. The 49ers have thrown for 388 yards. The Packers for 244. Running has not been a big part of it. But boy, would the 49ers love to be able to run some now. And what was a quiet crowd has come to life. Montana gets to Ratman. Flag on the play. Tim Harris made the stop. Did you see that fan in the say He was yelling, holding, holding. He was given the holding signal again on a running play. The guy in the fan knew. The fan in the stands knew already. How can he see? How does he know? Number 79 offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. All against Harris Barton, the right guard. Yeah, he's a right guard right there. Let's see if we can see it. Again, that left arm goes up right there. And maybe the right arm is in there, too. That was a whole Rathman went through, but you have to be able to do that, I think, to block. First and 20. Montana back to throw it to Taylor. Good tackle made by Jerry Holmes. Oh, and I'll tell you, Chuck Cecil better watch out. They're going after him. He was awfully close to coming in there in a late hit. He's a very aggressive safety. And he was awfully close. And I'll tell you, Taylor sees him coming. Watch 82, John Taylor here. He knows that he's going to get it. He's down, and he gets speared when he's down. I think the Packers and Chuck Cecil dodged the bullet there. It'll bring up a second and 15 situation. Montana to throw it. Gets it up. Screen pass to Carter. And Carter doesn't quite get the first down. Scott Steven was there along with Jerry Holmes. He picked up 12. It'll bring up a third down situation. Now remember the new rules within the last five minutes. They go back to the old rule. So if your player goes out of bounds, then the clock does stop, and it doesn't start until the snap of the ball. So what seems to go very quickly in the first and third quarter does not go as quickly in the fourth. This clock still running with three and a half minutes left, third and three. Montana again back to throw it. Pressure. Gets it up to Brent Jones enough for a first down. On the move again. Johnny Holland made the stop. You know, I think on that play we saw a lot of things. We were talking about the feeling, the pressure, the mobility, the presence, the being able to see, the knowing where your guys are. All those things in one play by Joe Montana. Clock running now less than three minutes. That's why Joe Montana has already thrown in this game for over 400 yards. Packers have two timeouts left. The 49ers three. And off to Carter. At the 45. Stopped there by Mark Lee. See, this is where the running or not being able to run really hurts you. Because you can't control the ball you can't take the time off the clock that you would like to. You have to do it with a forward pass. Packers take one of their two timeouts, so they have one left. There's Sterling Sharp. Sterling Boy, Sharp. would he like to get back in there and get another shot at it, wouldn't he? 
on CBS next week at 2 Eastern time next Saturday Notre Dame in all likelihood will be ranked number one against the Tennessee Volunteers they both won yesterday Tennessee over Temple Notre Dame again beat Navy and it all starts with college football today it's at 2 o'clock Eastern time the coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS Charles H. Milton III and Ed Gorham. Today's game produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. The NFL Today produced by Eric Mann, directed by Duke Strzok, the senior producer, David Winner, and the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Schaefer. Joe Montana just took another timeout. <laughs> 2.29 remain on the game clock. I think that Joe Montana had to be arguing that they didn't give him any more time on the play clock. And he looked up at the play clock and he didn't have enough time to get his play off. And he was arguing that, so he had to take the time out. Here's Mike Holmgren right here. He's the offensive coordinator. He's a guy who had a chance to become a head coach. National Football League was offered jobs. Could have went to the Jets. Turned down the job to stay with the 49ers as offensive coordinator. And a lot of the reason is because, you know, he was from San Francisco. But this guy here, to be able to work with Joe Montana and stay with him, I think that was a big, big part of it. Field in Green Bay. Pat Samoa with John Madden. And a cold, crisp football day. With the 49ers leading by four. Montana on a draw play to Carter. Mark Murphy made the stop. Green Bay another timeout. And that's all for them. Well, see, they know that they have to get the ball back because being down by four, they have to, one, get the ball back, and then, of course, they have to think in terms of getting a touchdown. They just can't get in position to kick a field goal. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and this CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Green Bay Packers, and the National Football League is prohibited. The city still leading the Raiders, but barely. Miami won again. Hey, look at Washington there. They're uh, putting some points on the board coming back. Jets at Bruce Coslett's doing a good job of coaching there. Big play here. Third and three. Mikowski, I beg your pardon, Montana, rolls right incomplete. Makowski will get another shot. Hey, a Matt Brock, number 62 for the Packers. He came flying through there. Watch 62. He has the containment. Now he, just as Montana throws the ball, he hits him. But I think he made Montana throw that ball a little before he wanted to. So the 49ers will have to punt. And the Packers are not lined up in anything that would be like a punt block because they have three guys deep. If you're going to go on a punt block, you usually have nine or ten up. Barry Helton. Pretty good kick. Rod hit signal, fair catch. And did it. And the Packers will take over at their own 18. 2.12 left on the clock. They'll get a play before their two-minute warning. And you remember last year, these Packers, they were called the Cardiac Packers. Murkowski was called the Magic Man. These were the situations where he came back and led them to victory. Packers have whatever wind there is. It's not that strong, but it's at their back. 
Yep, it doesn't get a lot of better, doesn't get a lot better than this. The world champions fighting for their life here in Wisconsin. At the 19, first and 10. McCaskey, everything falls back on him. He gets the ball out the front. No. He can't keep his footing. And there's no gain. A loss of nothing, but a gain of nothing. Two-minute warning. 24-20, 49ers. The big second game in next, next week's NFL doubleheader features the currently undefeated New York Giants visiting the Los Angeles Rams. You might recall the Flipper Anderson touchdown that knocked the Giants out of the playoffs last year and propelled the Rams all the way to the NFC Championship. Well, the Giants haven't lost since then. 4-0 in preseason, 7-0 in regular season. We'll meet again next Sunday. John Madden and I will bring it to you. The Giants are a lot better team now than they were then. Those of you who just joined us, the Packers have the ball at their own 19, trailing 24 to 20. As McCaskey gets the ball to Kemp, who dropped the ball, and the 49ers, I think, recovered. Eric Wright made the hit. If that one stays, that'll be the first turnover today. That was the thing that the Packers worried about. They knew that they couldn't have any turnovers. They're down 24-20 with one last chance to beat the champions, and then they have their first turnover of the game. Barry Kemp just turns out of there. The ball, as Ronnie Lott hits him, it goes out the back door on him. Then Eric Wright comes in, and it looks like he recovered the fumble. Much to the dismay of Don Mikowski. Yeah, Mikowski did what he had to today. His offensive line did a job of pass protecting. Sterling Sharp had an excellent day of getting open and making big plays. They knew they couldn't afford the turnover. And when do they have it? A minute and 48 seconds to go. And they're out of timeouts, the Packers. And so Montana will just let things run out. Under that towel, under that glove, Perry Kemp. Again, a reminder that coming up next will be the NFL today. The postgame show scores and highlights. With the Dragon Terry. Sterling Sharp. That's Perry Kemp. There's the guy who had a heck of a game. He knew that he had to put the pressure. He wasn't worried about the Packer running game. He said there's only one guy we have to worry about. That's Mikowski and put pressure on him. And Charles Haley did that today. 24-20. The Packers lead, uh, the 49ers lead it, and they would remain undefeated. You know, and as you look at them and you realize that they're going for a three-peat and all that stuff, trying not to think about that, but when you win as many games as they do, you're going to win them in a lot of different ways. They haven't lost in almost a year. They, the Green Bay Packers, I feel, played as well as they could play. I don't think they could play a better game than they play today offensively and defensively in every way. They had a great game plan. They were a very well-coached team. The slowest seconds in the world running off that clock. The 49ers start trotting to the locker room. 24-20. The Packers at one time led 10-0. 49ers got on the scoreboard just before the end of the first half and then put it away. Mostly Montana to Rice. Two old New York Giants talking here, Billy Yard and Jim Burt that were teammates. The New York Giants. Once again, the final score here at Lambeau Field was 24-20, 49ers winning. Coming up next, the NFL Today postgame show, Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw have all the scores and highlights. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.